What's going on everybody? Michael LeVan here. Thank you for joining me. And I wanted to make this video around Kubernetes, uh, primarily Helm charts, Kubernetes. So first and foremost, what's a Helm chart? Helm chart is a package manager, much like Aptitude or Yum in Linux or Chocolatey in Windows, right? Except the big difference here is, is that it can also create a structure based on your YAML files in Kubernetes. So for example, right, let's say you have a Nginx deployment and the Nginx deployment has to have some values that gets passed in uh, at runtime, much like for example, Jinja, right? If you've ever used Jinja or Jinja 2 templates, you have a few brackets and then within a bracket, you have a value that's calling another value that has the actual value that you want. Right. So it's kind of like a key value pair in a sense, but not really. So the first thing that I want to do is show you guys what you can do to spin up Kubernetes locally. Um, you don't need to do this locally. You can do this uh, in a Kubernetes cluster in Azure, AKS and AWS, EKS, whatever you want. Right. Really, as long as you have a Kubernetes cluster somewhere, it's really all you need. Um, so I do have mini cube installed minikube is just like a dev environment for kubernetes that runs on windows 10 or os x right so what i can do is i can do minikube start and then i can start it based on hyper-v so what i'm going to do here is minikube start and then you're going to have to type in a vm driver so driver and then whatever driver you're using. So because I'm on Windows 10, I'm just going to use Hyper-V. You can also use VirtualBox uh, depending on what operating system you're on. Typically, I run Minikube on my Mac, but uh, I, I don't really run it too much on Windows, but it still works just fine. So do Hyper-V. I actually don't know if this is going to work, so let's see what happens. Uh, Minikube start. What's the problem here? Let's go Minikube start flags. Yeah, Hyper-V. Hold on, let's take a look here. Uh, oh, this isn't even a stack trace. This is, let's see. Mm, oh, VM driver, that's what it is. VM driver. So, Kubernetes documentation is actually wrong. So while this is going, let me show you guys something. I'm gonna search for this documentation, pull it over. So the documentation here actually says Minikube start driver, right? But we actually had to use VM driver. So that's interesting. Fixing stuff on the fly. Uh, I might even, they, they host their documentation on GitHub, so I might even just uh, put a pull request in there so we can help them change that. So this is going to take a little while. Uh, and the reason why, let me show you. If I open up Hyper-V, see this here? So it's actually pretty interesting. What Minikube does, is, or what Kubernetes does is it is running on your local host, right? But Kubernetes itself is actually running on a virtual machine, very much like Docker. So if you use Docker desktop, right, on OS X, Windows, whatever, you're always gonna see where if you go into the virtual environment, if you're using Hyper-V, VMware, VirtualBox, whatever, there's always a virtual machine that's spun up. So it's running on your local host, but not really, it's actually running in a VM. So this is just going to take a little bit for that VM to be spun up. And I'm just going to go ahead and pause this because I actually don't know how long this is going to take. And uh, I want to spare you guys the time of sitting and looking at my face for 20 minutes. Just coming back after waiting a few minutes. And wow, this is taking a pretty long time. But the good news is the virtual machine is running. If we open up the virtual machine here, let's see what it's doing. Okay, it's booting up the kernel now. That's good. All right, give this a few more minutes here. Hopefully this will be done shortly. All right, this is definitely taking forever. I feel like this is uh, not normal. So I'm gonna do something. Minikube delete. Uh, oh, all right, 
let's try to spell that right. Right, so I'm gonna try to delete it because I had a cluster running previously. Well, a VM, right? They call it a cluster. Um, and I don't know, for some reason it, it looked like it was hanging. Uh, the kernel was rebooting, but it I don't, I don't know why it wasn't uh, coming up. So I'm just gonna try to destroy what I had and then I'm going to redeploy it. Um, so while we're kind of waiting for this and we'll try to spin this back up, essentially what I want to show is it, there's two primary parts of Helm. One is to create that application, like I was saying before, and get you a chart. And the other one, not to mention, is the ability to search in the package manager for applications that already exist, right? Like WordPress, for example, you can have a package up in Helm that is pre-approved and ready to go with WordPress, right? So if you wanted to do that, you could. So, but the part that I want to show primarily is the ability to create those actual charts. And uh, let's see, this is going to start creating here for us. I'm going to go ahead and pause again because hopefully this isn't going to take too long, but we'll see. All right, so we're back. That took maybe three to five minutes give or take yeah so it looks like the cluster that i had previously that I, I probably haven't touched for months it was in some sort of odd state where it didn't want to come back up maybe a kernel panic perhaps uh so deleting it redoing it as you can see here created the virtual machine uh pulled down the kubernetes api 1170 uh it's being ran on 19035 docker uh pulled the images down launched it all that stuff so now if i do for example Oh yeah, look here, uh, it's compatible with, okay, so the kubectl version I have is incompatible with Kubernetes 117.0. Let's see if I can upgrade that. I forget if I installed it via kubectl. No, I did not. Okay, so choco install. Uh, let's see, kubectl is not installed. It absolutely is, I'm looking at it. See if I can run get nodes. Oh, okay, it's actually working fine. I don't even know why I was getting that error. So again, for everyone on kubectl get nodes, I can see that's running. Obviously, I have no uh, deployments or anything running, which is fine. Okay, so now we got Kubernetes up. So let's go ahead and install Helm. So on Windows, I'll use Chocolatey. If you're on Mac, uh, you can use Brew. So Choco install Helm. So the path is not found. Interesting. Is hmm. I wonder if Helm's not a package. No, it's gotta be. Now let's say chocolatey uh, Helm. Oh, Kubernetes hyphen Helm. Jeez, fancy. All right, let's try that. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Gas here. We'll wait for this to install. Okay, so we have our command line here. So <clears throat> the first thing that I want to show is one, what to search for, right? So if I do helm search hub, right and using this it's kind of like apt get right except you're not installing something or choco install right you're just searching to see if it exists so i'm going to do a helm search on hub for wordpress right so as you can see these are actual helm charts and again helm charts are just kubernetes manifest with values for you know like runtime right for like the image name or the image id or the name of the application that you're deploying right so that actual chart is just allowing you to kind of kind of just like build up your application in one place um i think the the best example that i could give us is, is like if you've ever used kubernetes or not kubernetes if you've ever used ansible right ansible has galaxy roles and what galaxy roles does is it packages it up into like a directory and that directory has different levels and a hierarchy and that's pretty much what helm does for you as well um so what this is is this is helm charts that somebody maybe it was wordpress maybe it was somebody like me right 
put up on hub.helm and allows you to bring it down if you want to, right? Like to install it kind of like a Docker image, right? You can bring it down to localhost and then you can use it in your Kubernetes cluster. Now, let's say that you don't want to do that and you want to create your own, right? So let's check that out. Again, let's clear this. Let's look at what we have here. So these are our existing available commands. So you can install a chart, you can list one, you can roll back, status, version, upgrade, all these things, right? Or you can create, right? We'll look at this line right here. So let's go ahead and just create a brand new one. So I'm just gonna go to my desktop and I'm gonna do, see that? That's weird, that H. Uh, I'll create, and then I'm gonna say web app, right? And then, as you can see, this Helm chart just popped up here. So let's CD into web app, and let's open it up in VS Code. So let's take a look at this in VS Code here, right? So now this is what it created for us, right? Like that's what's in the directory. So you have some ignore files, you have a charts.yaml, right? This is gonna be in every single one. This is just for the version that you're using for Helm, right? Um, now these are the values, right? So for example, I'm gonna use a Nginx YAML file, right? Or Redis or MySQL, whatever, right? What I could do is I could set up my values here. Oh, Minikube isn't in the an upgrade. Um, Sorry. So I can use my values here, right? And then I can use them in my Helm chart, right? So let's go ahead and just create a, a Nginx YAML file, very, very basic one, um, just to kind of give you guys an idea of what we're looking at. So go to my templates, go to my deployment, right? So this is where your application is going to be your Kubernetes manifest, right? So let's just go ahead and just delete all this. And this is just by default. Like this is just what comes by default when you do a uh, Helm create. So I'm just going to paste in this Nginx YAML file, right? Because um, the code, I mean, like writing the code, I'm not really worried about that right now. What I'm more worried about is showing you guys the different values that you can add. So I'm going to delete this. We're going to keep it as a kind deployment. Replicas, just use one that's fine. We're probably not going to actually spin it up. I just want to show you guys what's going on here. So here I have my image, right? And I have the name and I have the ports, right? Now, in any reusable code, right, you don't want to add static values. Now, a Kubernetes manifest, I mean, it really depends on how you're designing your manifest. Because, for example, if you're designing your manifest that, let's say, they're deploying every single time that a new version of your application comes out in development, right? And maybe you're doing in your CI CD process a build every four hours. It's going to be quite annoying to come in here and change the image version every four hours, right? Like, you don't want to do that manually. Um, so what you want is a place that can be updated automatically. So what I mean by that is a place that you can pass in runtime, right? And you can update those values automatically, say, in your CI CD pipeline. So with that being said, let's go ahead and go back into our values, right? And then within our values, we can see our image and then the repository, right? So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to see exactly what image we want to pull. So let's say we want to do Nginx latest, right? And then once we do this, we'll be able to pull in Nginx latest. And then let's say we wanted to update this value in our CI CD pipeline. We could absolutely do that as well. So let's go back to our deployment. We'll save this, go back to our deployment, right? So now the syntax is just this, right? So you have two double quotes, you have two brackets opening, two brackets closing, and then you put your value in the middle here. Again, like I said, if you're used to Jinja or Jinja 2 syntax, pretty much identical, right? Now for the value here, the way that Helm knows that you're passing in a value at runtime is you start every single value with dot value. And then what you do is you pass in where the value is. So for example, 
Let's go back here and we can see our value is image and then under image it's repository. So now I know that I need to go by image and then I need to go by repository. So I'm going to go back here. Uh, oops, sorry, values. So dot values, right? And then dot image. And then under image, right under this tree, if that's what you want to call it, you want to call it a tree, repository. All right. So let's do dot repository, right? Now, let's say you want to do this for replicas, right? So say so I want to bump this bad boy up to four. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in here and then under replicas, I'm going to do the same thing. Double quote. Open, open, close, close. Now I'm going to do dot values dot replica count. Now keep in mind, remember the reason why I had to have two values here is because one value, two values. Now if I did this, image value. Nginx latest, right? Simply do this. Right? So depending on what the value here is, is what you would put in for the value here as in the key value pair, right? So really what you're looking at here is you're looking at a key value pair. Everything always starts with dot values and then dot wherever the key is. So replica count, for example, if you're thinking of this as a key value pair, it's the easiest way for me to think about it. Replica count equals this key, which entails pulls that value, right? So that's pretty much what I had for this video. I just wanted to show you guys, you know, kind of getting started with Helm and why I personally use it. I personally don't pull down Helm charts from the internet like the WordPress ones that I was showing you. I usually build my Helm charts like this so I have reusable code. So thanks for watching, guys. And if you like this topic, let me know and I can definitely make some more stuff around this topic. Take care.